All right, welcome back to MVMRC. This is Brian. Before we get too far into today's video, I want to go ahead and remind you guys that we still have that contest going on. I know originally we said September 1st, but with COVID and everything going on, we wanted to go ahead and we wanted to try to make this something special for you guys. So we kind of postponed it back till Thanksgiving. So the way that it works basically is if we get a thousand subscribers by Thanksgiving, what we do is we pick a subscriber at random, we get a hold of them, uh, we ask them what their choice is of an old school model works kit. They tell us no matter the cost, it's it's the kit of his or her choice. We will then buy it for you and we'll ship it to you. It doesn't cost you a dime, it's free of charge. All you have to do is hit that little subscribe button and go ahead and hit that notification bell also. That way you know whenever we have any new content, we post any new content, you guys are the first to know about it. Also, if there's any criticism, whether it be constructive, whether we're doing a terrible job, whether we're doing a great job, please feel free to put that in the comment section below. We do appreciate any kind of criticism we get or any kind of comment we get. We do appreciate that. So like, comment, subscribe, and I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Thanks a lot. See ya. What are you flying today, Matthew? I'm flying my Bill Evans Zippity Doodle. With the uh, KNV 40, like he had. So it's running a little rich because KNV 40s don't like to be ran lean. There's been a couple guys that have asked for a video of this thing flying. What would you compare it to? Kind of like a big stick, probably? I think it was Bill Evans' attempt of a big stick. Yeah, it's got the same wing as the uh, Advantage. Same uh, templates and everything. This is pretty much like a Advantage fuselage too, just upside down. Different rudder. Probably do about everything, won't it? Yeah, it tracks really nice. Yeah, we did a uh, Bill Evans video series, and there's actually still quite a bit of stuff from that. We haven't released it yet, but we'll probably put it out. Uh, but basically, he was all about the upper reflex wing with no stabilizer in the back. And Matthew actually talked to Bill Evans, the guy that designed these. What was he like, Matthew? Was he, he was probably pretty senile when you spoke with him, if I remember correctly. Yeah, he wasn't, uh, he was still, he was a really nice guy, he was. But, uh. All of his stuff flies really nice, but the one thing I will say is if you're flying off of a grass field, there are some issues with taking off. Would you agree, Matthew? Yeah. There's the signature uh, Bill Evans inverted turn. Keep that stick locked like that. And it'll stay right there that whole time. But there's a lot of guys on YouTube. Uh, one of them would be uh, Nightflyer. Uh, Dave Herbert, he shares a lot of really cool stuff on YouTube, and uh, actually, uh, Casey Davis from the uh, RC Scrap Pile podcast has a uh, Bill Evans plane. If I'm not mistaken, Matthew, what is it? It's the it's the red one that Dad has. It's the uh, slow motion. No. Uh, the fast one. Oh, the tracer. The tracer, yes. But uh, if you have not checked out the uh, RC Scrap Pile podcast yet, I definitely suggest looking at those guys because uh, that is a very, very cool uh, podcast to check out. I'm going to check my uh, fuel supply here. Idle's kind of high. Now, is the KMB-40 an engine that Randy still has? I mean, he says he does, but the best place to get them is eBay because you can get them really cheap and they're brand new. For those of you who don't know, uh, KMB Engines is owned by Makoa, which is a conglomerate company, which uh, basically they carry a bunch of uh, model engine companies that went out of business. We're not really sure if they reproduce the engines or if they just sell out previous stock. 
but Randy Lenzalato is the man's name that owns the business. I might have been coming in the wrong way too, I'm not sure. Give us just a quick uh, pilot's debrief on what you think of the plane. Well, I can tell you that it is a 64 span, the same as the Advantage. And I had a KMB 48 in my Advantage, and my dad had a Weber Speed 50. It's a pretty good size airplane for a 40. So that says a lot for the KMB 40 for its power. Uh, as far as just straight up just sport flying us playing, a 40 is plenty for it. If you really want to buggy with it, I'd probably suggest a 46AX or a 55AX. If you want to go retro, can be 40 all the way. Uh, the rudder, the rudder's massive. It's got a big surface area on the back there. I can't seem to get at the knife head. Maybe I have too much input in it, I don't know. But uh, inverted flight, rolls i mean i can turn my high rates on and just it spins really quick it does tight loops lazy loops uh, stall turns uh, split asses it does all that does it really really smooth too how's its stability you can slow this thing down to a crawl i mean imagine a sig senior flying at, at idle and this will do the same same exact thing now, I mentioned earlier about how some of these Bill Evans planes don't take off very well off of grass runways like this. This is not one of the ones that has problems, correct? If you take it off on low rates, it's fine. If you take it off on the on the high rates that I have, you have to let it get a good roll out and, and climb it that way. But it, it all depends on how you have it set up. It I seemed have, like this, the Advantage, they were both pretty good at taking off on grass runways. I have 250s on the back is, is what he called for, 250 Dubra wheels, and I have a 3-inch on the front. So I don't know if that gives the wing the right tip into the uh, takeoff position or not. That's just how he had it set up. Uh, I also kind of did like a Bill Evans kind of scheme. That's something that he would have came up with. Yeah, and I have the uh, Bill Evans always use like a metallic, like a pearl kind of blue on the bottom of his wing, so I kind of did it the way he uh, he would have done it. Uh, I think his had I think he was still using the sliding tray for his elevons. Yeah, we did uh, dual ailerons, and what we did in the foam cores is we just bored through the the root. And I think on this one here, I actually used. Uh, uh, half inch brass tubes to feed my wires through you can do it with just the foam you can just feed it through the foam but i put uh, brass tubes in mine uh the other thing is i think we was experimenting with these later ones that we was doing we used drywall tape for the uh, center section and that works really good the fiberglass tape yeah uh then we we sprayed it down with like 3m adhesive no it already had the adhesive on it oh that's right yeah, we just we just put the glass tape that already had the adhesive on it. We we just put the medium CA down on it and medium CA and then I went over the medium CA with uh, Sig Weld. Yeah. But all in all, what would you give out of ten? I'd give it a ten. Yeah. Really smooth flying airplane. Now these all these Bill Evans planes, especially the ones that have these uh, square fuselages, would be pretty easy to make electric, wouldn't they? Oh yeah. I mean, uh, all of his planes had a rather large hatch on the bottom. That This all gets built in there, and you cut this hatch in late. Yeah. So I think this had either quarter square or something like that in there, and you just cut that yeah, at a tab. If you were doing that as an electric, you could put that hatch on the top and make it magnetic so that your battery would go right in there. And you can still get these cores from Eureka, correct? You can, yeah. Okay. All right, just in case anybody's curious, because there were some people asking to see this thing fly, so... But uh, Matthew says 10 out of 10, probably a pretty good plane. Uh, don't be afraid to, uh, to check it out. I'll leave a link in the description below to get to Eureka. 
And uh, also don't forget about that contest. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying the content. Thanks.